This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the fractional distillation of crude oil. Petroleum is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons that can be split into different component parts called fractions by fractional distillation. Petroleum is a broad category that includes both crude oil and petroleum products. Crude oil needs to be refined before use. The different fractions are separated by a physical process in fractional distillation. Next we look at fractional distillation. In fractional distillation, the crude oil is separated depending on the boiling points of the different fractions. The crude oil is heated to about 400 degrees C. The different fractions are vaporized and rise up the distillation column. The level at which the fractions condense depends on their boiling point which in turn depends on their molar mass. Smaller molecules rise to the top of the column and larger molecules collect at the bottom. So here we have a diagram of a distillation column. The crude oil is heated to about 400 degrees C and the different levels at which the fractions condense depends on their boiling points. Smaller molecules with their lower boiling points rise to the top of the column and larger molecules, such as lubricating oil, with its higher boiling point, collect at the bottom. Next, we look at the relationship between molar mass and boiling point. As molar mass increases, the strength of the intermolecular forces between the molecules also increases. More energy is required to overcome the attractive forces between the molecules, therefore the boiling point increases. Here we have two examples of hydrocarbon molecules that make up the crude oil mixture. At the top we have C20H42, at the bottom we have C4H10. Which one will have the higher boiling point? C20H42 has a higher boiling point than C4H10. The boiling point of C20H42 is 342 degrees C, the boiling point of C4H10 is negative 1 degrees C. And the reason for this is that C20H42 has a higher molar mass, therefore it has stronger intermolecular forces between the molecules. This gives it a higher boiling point. Next we look at the different fractions, their boiling points, the number of carbon atoms and some of their uses. If we look at the uses, we can see that the majority of the fractions are used as fuels. The lighter fractions are also used as feedstocks for petrochemicals. And the heavier fractions are used as lubricating oils and bitumen for surfacing roads. And finally, if we look at the number of carbon atoms and the boiling point, we can see that as the number of carbon atoms in the molecule increases, so does the boiling point. This is because as the number of carbon atoms increases, so does the molar mass and this results in stronger intermolecular forces between the molecules.